I'm Mr. James from Charm City Karate, uh, and today I was going to talk to you guys about the evolution of your martial art. Um, it's actually, the idea was sparked by uh, something Mr. Big Daddy 8 commented uh, on one of the other videos I did. You know, your martial art is going to evolve, or your needs for your martial art are going to evolve as you progress and as you age. Unless you're one of those cowboys that comes in and you get your black belt and you go, all right, I got my black belt, and you quit and you ride off into the sunset and you're gone. Or you're one of those kids that comes in and you train and you learn how to do a 540 kick and you win 10 trophies and that's it, you're done. You know, and then you get old and you lose a bunch of hair and you get a pot belly and you look at those trophies on the mantle when you get older and go, yeah, I used to be good at karate. All right, but if you are serious about martial arts, a karate nerd like me, and it's something that you are going to continue to do for a long time, if you're a lifer, your needs from your martial art and what you are going to look for from your martial art are going to change. And what you're looking to do with it are going to evolve. So, sometimes your martial art is going to have to evolve. Sometimes it'll just be your outlook. A lot depends. If you got lucky and you started out in a good martial art, you'll just be able to take different aspects of it or different facets of that martial art and apply them to what you need. If you picked not as good of a martial art or one that's more limited, then it, you will probably have to change martial arts. You might even have to change a couple of times over the course of your life. Some people just like to change because they like variety, you know, like they like to date a lot of different girls or a lot of different guys, whatever. That's fine. But think about it like this. You know, if you start when you're a kid, maybe what you want to do is get a whole bunch of trophies. So you learn how to do jump 540 kicks and some of those crazy forms that have nothing to do with fighting or self-defense or anything like that. But they look really cool, they impress judges, there's a lot of screaming. So you get trophies doing that stuff. And you get kind of bored of that as you get a little older. You know, maybe you hit your early teens. So then you want to do weapons. Now. Maybe you get lucky and your style has weapons forms. So you start doing those. But if it doesn't, and you really want to do weapons, you move on. You pick up another martial art. So now you start doing weapons. You get into tournaments doing weapons. And you start winning more trophies, or whatever it is you like to do. And, ta-da, now you have more trophies for doing weapons forms. Huh, that's cool. Now you start to like doing sparring because you get a little older and, and you really like the physical parts of the martial arts. You like the hitting and the sparring and the moving around. So you get into that. You know, you're probably talking late teens, early 20s at this point. That's the stuff you like to do. Anybody that doesn't spar is a wuss. So you might have to change martial arts again depending on how your martial art handles sparring. I've actually been to studios where they don't spar at all. Whatever. Uh, I've been to other schools where all they do is spar. You come in, they teach a sparring drill, and you fight. Whatever. So, now you're sparring all the time. If you still like tournaments, maybe you go to tournaments, you earn more trophies. Maybe you've gotten past the tournament thing, and you start to think, you know, tournament sparring with that whole hit the guy, raise my hand, prance around like a gazelle, that's not really what I want to do, man. I, I, you know, I want to get in and do like some continuous contact sparring. Okay, maybe the martial arts you're in only allows for tournament style point sparring. You might have to go and find another martial art. Maybe not. Maybe your martial art has an avenue into MMA and you can get into continuous contact sparring. You never know. Okay, and then maybe you decide you want to do self-defense kind of fighting. 
You know, you want to do stuff that's going to be applicable to the real world. So you start getting into that instead. You know, you're probably talking mid to late 20s, early 30s at this point. So you start getting into that sort of thing. And you're doing that as your martial art. Okay, and that's cool. Again, you might have to change martial arts. Some martial arts are only good for tournaments. That's all they do. They're great for trophy hounds. They are not good for anything else. Some martial arts don't have any tournament aspect at all. Tai Chi is useless for tournaments. You're not going to get any trophies for that. Okay, maybe once in a while you see a guy doing a Tai Chi form at a, tor at a tournament or something, but really? Come on. So, there you go. Then, you might decide you want to get into adrenal stress kind of stuff. Not too many martial arts cover that, so you're going to have to step out a little bit. Maybe you want to get into some handguns and firearms. You're going to have to step outside for that. Maybe you want to get into live weapon stuff, like uh, modern weapons, you know? You have to step outside for that. Okay? Your needs in your martial arts are going to change. They're going to dictate things. Then, as you get older, if you're still staying with a martial art, and you're being realistic, you're going to notice that either through injury or just old age, you're going to slow down. You're going to not move so well. You're going to get weaker. Okay, these are just natural physical effects of getting older. Okay, especially if you were into a whole lot of fighting when you were younger. Or maybe you played football. Or maybe you got into a car accident. Okay, lots of things can happen to you to slow you down. So now you need to consider what are some things I can do to end fights faster? Or what are some things I can do to make it so that I don't have to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy and bang? So now maybe what you do is you consider light force knockouts or pressure points or throws or who knows? You know, you're going to have to start to seek different avenues, things that are going to allow you to avoid fights or end fights really, really fast, all right? So all this means is you have to consider what is the correct martial art for you right now. And if you started when you were six or seven, and you intend to continue until you were 60 or 70, it, it's kind of ludicrous to assume you'll be able to do the same martial art with the same focus the entire way through. It's just not going to happen. It's like saying you could stay in first grade your entire life. There's no way. You can stay in school your entire life, but you can't stay in first grade. Learning the same thing over and over again for your whole life, boring. Same thing with martial arts. You can't learn the same thing over and over again for your whole life. You can stay in school, you got to change subjects, you got to change courses, okay? When you're in school, you go through elementary school, middle school, high school, college, graduate school, okay? Same kind of thing with martial arts. You could start with one school, go to another school, and another school, and another school, okay? Personally, I still love my original martial art. I love Kempo. It doesn't mean that I haven't seasoned it with a few other martial arts. What I have done, because this is what suits me, is I've gone and I've found another martial art, studied it for a while, and then I've taken the parts that I really liked and found ways that they can integrate into my Kempo. I found things in Eskrima and Arnis that fit back into Kempo, maybe do some things better than Kempo or do things in different ways that work better for me. Maybe I found some things in Judo that unlocked ideas in Kempo that weren't working out so good the way they were taught in Kempo. You know, I found different joint locks and pressure points from other martial arts that I was able to bring back and open new avenues in Kempo. Kempo's still my first love. It's what I love to do. 
but uh, I approach it very differently. When I was young and doing it, it was all about how fast can I go, how many times can I hit this guy, and blast him and beat him up. Now, I want it over as fast as I can get it over. That doesn't mean hit him a hundred times in two seconds. It means hit him effectively and put him on the ground so I can leave. If I can hit him twice and be done, that's a win. I don't want to hit him 50 times to get away. I want to hit him two times, or maybe even one time, okay? Because I'm getting older, slower, still not slow, just slower. I don't want to be hanging out all day, all right? Here's another thing that's going to evolve your martial art. When you were a young buck, you probably didn't think about having a wife and kids with you. If you're going to have a wife and kids with you now, that's going to change your martial art. Those are other people you have to consider when you're doing self-defense. When you're a young crazy buck, some dude comes up and he's pushing on you, he's giving you the chest bump, gives you the shoulder, and then he gives you the what? You want to stand there and bang with him or him and his two buddies? You can do it. Who cares? You're older, you got a wife and two kids with you, some guy gives you the shoulder bump and the what? What are you going to do? Really? You're going to stand there and bang with him while your wife and your two kids freak out? Your two kids are crying, your wife's yelling at you to go, and you go stand there and bang with him like some kind of Neanderthal. It's no good. You don't really ever want your kids to have to see that side of you. I'm not saying that it's not your job to protect your family. I'm saying you don't want your kids to see that mess, okay? So you need to find ways to get the job done that they don't need to see, all right? So think about the evolution of your martial art. And if you need to add to or subtract from or alter your martial art, that does not make you some kind of a traitor or, or make you a bad person in any way, okay? You need to evolve your martial art as you grow and as you change and as you age. It's just a natural thing. Okay, don't, don't feel like a bad guy. It's something we all have to do. All right, so I'm Mr. James from Charm City Karate. This is the evolution of your martial art. Have a great day. See you in class.